Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 6, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today has a quick diary about a piece of malware that he found that uses the good old UPX packer. UPX is, well, not really malicious. It's intended to be a quick way to compress binaries that are then able to self-unpack as the user runs the binary. But of course, that's also quite helpful for attackers. And over the years, attackers have made small changes to the original UPX algorithm in order to create intentionally incompatible implementations that make reverse analysis a tiny little bit more difficult. I remember, I think it was like 15 years ago or so, uh, Tom Liston wrote like a little uh, tool for us that uh, he packed with UPX uh, just to basically arrive at a smaller binary. And back then, actually, some antivirus tools just flagged it because it used UPX. Well, uh, Xavier walks you through how to analyze a binary that is packed with UPX. Of course, often you can just essentially decompress it using one of the freely available UPX command line tools. And ESET took a look at attacks against air-gapped networks, at least attacks that have become public. So where there is some detail available about how the attack exactly evolved. Well, uh, probably not a big surprise, but as far as techniques go in order to bridge the air gap, there isn't much about blinking LED lights or the sound of spinning fans or any of these very theoretical uh, methods that of course always sort of make the news big times when a researcher demonstrates something like this in a lab. Instead, a lot of USB sticks. Uh, all of these attacks evolved a USB stick in order uh, to bridge the air gap. So that appears to be the most popular and really the only way how air gaps are really breached these days. Now, these USB sticks are typically not introduced by a malicious actor. Uh, they're introduced uh, by essentially sort of an innocent victim that plugs in the USB stick. And then link files and auto run files apparently are being used at least in a three quarter of the attacks in order to then deliver a payload, exfiltrate data back to the USB stick to later retrieve the data once the USB stick is removed from the air gapped network. And as you may have guessed, uh, based on the use of uh, link exploits and auto run files, all of the attacks involved uh, Windows systems and none of the frameworks that ESET uh, discovered or really sort of reviewed here as part of uh, this study did attack another operating system. Let me got an interesting twist uh, to a story that I believe I covered uh, a couple of months ago, and it was a breach of Ubiquiti that apparently had some user data leaked. And now turns out that this may not have been sort of the breach that we really thought about at first. Instead, it was a malicious insider that stole the data, then contacted the company claiming to be an anonymous hacker and essentially demanding a ransom. Once uh, the uh, attack was actually uh, discovered, and uh, pinned to the particular employee. The employee then went forward and uh, contacted media as an anonymous insider and whistleblower claiming that uh, the leak was due to some internal security vulnerability that Ubiquiti failed uh, to mitigate. The arrest announcement to which I'll link in the show notes uh, does not actually mention uh, Ubiquiti by name, but that has been confirmed that what's called company one one in the press release is actually ubiquity. Now, of course, I don't usually like to cover breaches like this uh, without uh, really talking a little bit about sort of lessons learned from it. Uh, really hard to sort of draw some actionable lessons from this incident. 
allegedly uh, the uh, individual here uh, did steal gigabytes of data as it says in the press release that's not really that much data for an insider uh, to essentially you know, download or access so i don't think that would easily have triggered any alerts what may have triggered alerts is that log retention policies were modified in order to cover uh, tracks and maybe that actually then led uh, to the discovery of uh, that particular individual that's not quite known yet exactly at least from the press release so it'll be interesting to see how this all works out in court well and is it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye